I'm excited to see some development in System 76's Rust version of the Cosmic Desktop. That's right, more on Cosmic Desktop environment to kick off 2023. Here's a recent blog post posted a few days ago that is describing some of the new updates that the team over there in System 76 has been working on as far as settings go in the desktop environment. So today I'm going through some of these changes that have been made by exploring their settings panel and talking about some of the updates that they're making. If you wanna check out the project and actually build this from source for yourself, you can do this by going to their GitHub page. I'll post a link in the description below. Also, if you want me to compile some of this in source like I have in the past, let me know. But today we're going to be exploring things in Figma, which is offered to anyone who wants to check out the slides that they built for the UI. And I have access to it here where we can see, first off, the power panel. This is in settings, of course. And now we don't have everything to interact with, but we can kind of tell what the overall general layout is going to be. We have rounded corners and we get options to choose whether we want an extended battery life, balance, or high performance. Great for us laptop users. Now, when you select between these, you'll notice that we have this light blue color for accents. I suppose that they're going to make it to where we can change this color around. I know that they do that on Pop OS currently, so I would expect the same whenever the Cosmic Desktop comes out, the Rust Edition. Other things included in here are battery life and anything else that's connected via Bluetooth, what type of life, and what the name of the headphones, wireless mouse are. Another very interesting feature that's hinted here is limit battery charging. So this is special because if you select this on, basically what it's doing is 80% charge is your maximum on your battery. This prevents the battery from being overcharged and constantly going from a max to a depleted state, which actually can affect your battery ever so slightly as far as longevity goes. Very interesting to see some of these new features that are going to be added. Quite excited for them. And initially we were told through a Twitter post that somewhere in 2023, we will be seeing hopefully a alpha version or maybe even a beta version that we'll get to test on our own. I've done past videos, I wanna say over a year ago now, when the project first started and was quite excited at the time and I'm still excited to see what other things are gonna come of this rest based desktop. Down here, you'll also notice a graphics mode. We'll explore this one in a little bit. I love the way that they did this one. This makes it really easy to get those proprietary drivers for us and video users and or just switch between different models of drivers for our graphics cards. Moving on, make sure to smash that like button for me so other people can see this desktop environment. But here is the about page. In the about page, they currently don't have much to be able to change, but this is where you can control things like your device name, get information about your hardware and your operating system. You'll start noticing a theme at the bottom where it's giving you suggestions to other th related settings on the system. That way you can quickly navigate to something that may be similar to what you're currently looking at because you simply might not be in the right location for what you're actually trying to do. On this settings page, there's not necessarily a lot that has changed between what you would find in something like GNOME. If you open up your GNOME settings right now and go to the about, you're gonna see pretty much the same thing, but maybe just a bit of a different look with some rounded edges here, different colors, of course, not too big of a difference in here. We'll move on to the time zone settings. Again, we're remaining with this rounded corner theme. What you'll also notice and what I've tried in the source builds is they actually have a lot of animations when going between these pages which actually look pretty slick. I'll have to show you that whenever I build things. But anyways, a simple search bar where you can search for your zone and then apply it below. In order to scroll, you can just use your mouse to go up and down. No scroll bar here. Notice how things get highlighted, or you can simply use your fingers to gesture up and down. Now, one of the most exciting things that I've seen is graphics mode. This can be tricky in most operating systems to simply choose between what type of graphics driver you want to use. Notice they have four options here, which I'm completely excited about. They have integrated graphics, NVIDIA graphics, hybrid graphics, and compute graphics. Now, most operating systems make this easy to select whenever you're installing the system, but not necessarily after the fact. This looks like an exciting settings feature because it looks like Pop! OS is focused on giving us the best out-of-box experience. I assume that these will not be pre-installed, but instead, it'll select some graphics mode that's going to work for just about anybody. And then you can go into the graphics mode settings and actually select, like for myself, I would wanna select the NVIDIA graphics option so I can get the proprietary drivers installed on my computer and run my graphics card to its full potential. What's also got me excited about this particular settings page is there's a chance to actually go between 
different graphics modes now, including selecting something like the integrated graphics, which says it turns off the dedicated graphics for a longer battery life and less fan noise. I mean, who doesn't want that on a laptop? Versus compute graphics, which says it uses the graphics for computational workloads only. So quite awesome to see these different modes available to us. One of the most exciting features that I've seen through their settings in the Cosmic Desktop Rust environment. Moving on to other exciting things, here's the preferred languages page in settings. You'll be able to add multiple languages and select a formatting for yourself. Let's, let's say you're in Europe and you want to switch over to the correct date format, you can by selecting one of these, going through, and notice it's not quite fully built up, but we can expect drop downs from here. I bet you they'll be a little easier to use whenever the actual beta release gets to us. But anyways, you can scroll up and down like normal and select an option, depending on which region you're in, calendar you're using, day format, temperature, readout you want, and measurement system. Some more simple settings available to us, such as which output device we want, which input device we want, if we wanna turn down the system volume for alerts, and various application settings. And now before we get to one of the most exciting parts, we have the wallpaper settings. So you'll be able to go through and select wallpapers. They have this wonderful scrolling ability at the bottom. It keeps current wallpaper fixed at the top. You can go through and set settings or add an image and also set various different wallpapers for various different displays. Notice how it has a 15 inch laptop display and a 27 inch external display. So these are two different setups that you can use and you can change between, of course, albums, colors, system backgrounds, or open up a new folder or even add an image. This is looking pretty great overall, in my opinion, very easy to use and really makes good use of tabs up top for multiple displays. I haven't really seen this too much in any other design on any other desktop environment. So I'm glad that they're exploring and actually making things better here in the wallpaper selection. But now let's go to what I think the coolest part is, and that's the general settings, specifically workspaces for multi-monitor and workspace control. Now you'll start to notice how the settings really looks. So some of the places that we've already visited are over here on the left-hand side. You can imagine we went into sound, power and battery settings, displays, kind of looked at some Bluetooth. Currently we're in personalization under the workspaces tab and you'll notice how that kind of, kind of translates left to right. So as you're selecting things, you're getting other menus populated and then finally the actual dialogue or display in between these two green arrows. I think it's a fantastic way. They've really redesigned things here. You can scroll up and down, of course, using a mouse or gesture support. That's all great. You can select between the other various sub menu items in the settings for a particular category like personalization. And you'll notice, of course, up top, we are currently in all settings. You can also use the search feature, which is absolutely fantastic. What happens here is if you click on search, this menu kind of goes away and then you can actually select between settings by just typing it in. And in another video that I used that in, it worked pretty dang well. Anyways, let's talk about some of these settings here for workspace. So you can have dynamic workspaces, which just automatically adds and deletes workspaces for you or a fixed amount if you want a fixed number to add. Then what's really exciting is, is this multi-monitor behavior. They've done some pretty cool animations here with these. So it shows you how exactly things work with workspaces that span displays. So basically this is one entire workspace that spans the display and you can scroll up and down to get to more of the display versus if you have displays with separate workspaces, you'll notice these two workspaces are completely independent of each other on the two monitors. I love the animation that they did, really shows you what you have selected. Then you have the vertical or horizontal layout. That's the orientation which your workspaces will, will be displayed. And what's awesome is that actually changes up the way your gesture support works. So it's more fluid and natural to go between those workspaces. Notice how if I do horizontal, I have this left and right swipe with four fingers or up and down. And then I have up and down with left to right. This would be to switch workspaces. This one here would be to open and this would be to open applications. Overall, I think they're doing an amazing job here with the new Cosmic desktop environment that's built on Rust. Some additional things that they talk about in the blog post that's not related to the settings is what they call dynamic rendering. Your computer has different ways of rendering visuals depending on what software you're running and whether or not your system has a dedicated GPU. Dynamic rendering solves for this by determining what rendering program your, your system should use. Basically use OpenGL or Vulkan if you have a GPU or SoftBuffer if you don't. So that's another feature to be excited about with, with the new Pop! OS desktop coming out. There's also another software rendering update paired with Cosmic Text, text rendering, SoftBuffer version, 
0.2 allows the software rendering backend for libcosmic widget library to be used on any operating system. That's absolutely fantastic. I think this portion is very awesome to hear. Cosmic Desktop is being developed for Pop! OS, but their goal is to make elements available for use on any other operating system. So imagine being able to use Cosmic Desktop across platforms and having a wonderful desktop environment that's fast and memory safe because it's built on top of Rust. Wouldn't that be fantastic? I know that I'm super excited about this. Plus, you could have an environment that's very similar across platforms. I'm really hoping that they introduce this to the likes of Linux, Windows, and maybe someone even makes a port to Mac OS. That'd be fantastic. Then I wouldn't have to go across different desktop environments. Instead, I just use Cosmic Desktop, which believe me, being a Pop! OS fan and System76 fan, I would definitely do. X Wayland testing. Cosmic Desktop uses the Wayland Display Driver, a program which communicates the rest of your system to run your application, show it on screen, and register user inputs. But Wayland is relatively new compared to X11. Of course, we know that. So some applications may not be compatible. That's where X Wayland comes in. So basically, they're introducing X Wayland to have a blend so we can actually have that cross compatibility for the applications that don't necessarily work with the newer Wayland display server. One of their engineers, Victoria here, has been able to integrate X Wayland to the compositor and are currently testing it. So some other great news. I'm really excited to hear more about the Pop! OS desktop environment and hopefully these blogs are going to start happening monthly for us so we can see what updates are getting on a monthly basis. I'd be very excited to go over these updates on a monthly rate. Let me know if you want me to do that in the comment section. Let's talk animations for a moment. They added another source project called the Cosmic Time Animation Crate, which adds support for animations on the Cosmic Desktop. And then below it shows you some of the animations that they were able to accomplish using this new animation crate for Iced. Anyways, in great System76 fashion, they plan on contributing back to the projects that actually helped build their Cosmic Desktop, including using Iced, which is a Rust-based framework for building front ends that they recently decided to start using for the various different components to make things easier. But let me know if you're excited in the comment section below. Let me know if I need to do more of these videos. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.